Hey, my name is Crystal Chibu and this is Hope Grill. This is the place where we grill hope, where we eat hope, where we birth hope, where we experience hope, where we teach hope. And at the end of this show, I hope that you would have a hope filled day and you'll be able to get to do the things that you've always wanted to do. With me today in the studio, I have someone that is so dear to my heart. He's so precious to me. He's my Egmo, as I call him. And for those people that do not know what Egmo means, that means your big brother, someone that looks after you, someone that cares for you and goes, you know, really out of his way to make sure that you are fine. And that person is none other than praise for who Praise, thank you so much for making it this evening. It's my pleasure, Crystal, being with you. I'm so excited at what you're doing. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and you know what? Praise is going to have the time to really tell you about what he does and and I'm going to be putting him on the spotlight this evening because really? um, I didn't tell him much about what we're going to be discussing. So I just want to hear his perspective and what he thinks about, you know, how we go a little bit deeper into our sexuality um, this evening. So please, can you please tell my viewers what you do, who you are, you know, beyond my egg Okay, um, <laughs> I simply I introduce myself as praise for where um i'm a family man that's 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 all i, I mm. that that's all i am um i work in the sphere of um, family life um i run certification programs for people who are coming into that space i started my life you know working on people's sexuality preventing child sexual abuse across the country um, but over time i've grown into because the more you help young people the more you realize that their parents were sabotaging their issues so we've now moved into to address the matter from the root to say hey let's um, help parents understand how to parent properly, let's help marriages, um, you know, understand how to build a proper marriage, and ultimately, let's build a wholesome home. Yeah. Chris, you know, I want to take your mind back to about, um, I can't remember the year now, but I remember there was a time you were doing stuff in Ajegunle. Yeah. And um, you were literally going into brothels and helping prostitutes, you know, yeah, that was get really... out of prostitution and get back to life and becoming, you know, you know, the person that God really created them to be. Yeah, I did that between two thousand and one to two thousand and nine, thereabout. Um, mm -hmm. I was, I mean, I was taking a walk around like only one day, and I saw six, um, you know, fourteen, thirteen-year-old girls prostituting, and I got in my room and I was just complaining, and it occurred to me that there was something I could do, and um, you know, I was like, I don't have money to rehabilitate them, but it occurred to me that. Way back, I could actually talk to a girl when I was a bad boy, okay? Talk a girl that I was just meeting, talk her into sex that same day. Wow. So I was like, if we could do that, why? what makes you think you can't talk people out of prostitution? So I was all I had was my mouth and my body, and I went there. And I was talking about prostitution, and that was how I started rehabilitating prostitutes. And I mean, it was the one of the best moments of my life, you know, because I mean, I of, think I was about when I also met you. Oh, yeah. Because I, I, I think that's so incredible. And praise, you talked about the only thing you felt you had then was just your mouth. Yeah. And so for you, you can talk. You f felt like if you could talk, you can actually talk the person out of prostitution. Abs absolutely. And th th I think that was so amazing because I met you then and I could not understand why somebody would go out of his way to, you know, go and meet people that were prostituting and try to get them out of prostitution. So for me, really, my question is what inspired that? Because it's not just your mouth, yeah. it's not just walking around the streets. What do you think inspired um, having to, you know, get prostitutes out of prostitution? Um, uh, for, um, this is me, I'm not a religious person, but um, deeply spiritual. And that night I remember that I went on my knees to pray. And um, what I felt the Lord say to me um, that day was, there was something you can do about this. Uh, because I was complaining about the government, he said you can be the government and change things. I was like, no, but God, I don't have you know money to help these people. He said, but you eat three times in this house, you can take your foot to them. And that's why I started taking my foot to these girls, and we hit together, you know, and literally became their pastor, you know. And um, I just had love for humanity. I couldn't bear seeing a problem and not feeling called to solve the problem. But there was a problem. The more I took them out, the more that's when we replaced them. Mm. And so I had to change the strategy from. Rehabilitation to preventing them from going. That was what gave back to gold in the slum in Ajegunle, which was a Sunday evening meeting. I ran that meeting for eight years, every wow. Sunday evening, you know, preventing girls from, because the typical Ajegunle girl way back, 
will not may not have their take the bath in the morning, but by four p.m. they have the bath. And you ask where they're going? They're going to work. They're going to return the following day. You know, so a whole lot of ladies from the brothels were taken to that meeting. A whole lot who would have gone into prostitution, you know, were saved from, you know, and there were guys who came into that. I, I see some of them now. There was one of them who came. He was in secondary school. You know, this guy had no. I mean, op or he was literally hopeless. But I mean, I saw him the other day, he's getting admission to, to do his PhD. Wow. You know, I, I, I get, I get all, all of course, some of them are in South Africa, Switzerland. I, I get calls to say, hey, praise you, were the one that took me out. I, I, I'm, I'm just grateful to God because I think that oftentimes we make excuses for reasons why we can do something. But all you need is a heart of love. You know, once, no, you have no right to shut the bowel of mercy and love to any human being. You know, so when you have a heart of love, I think that's enough to do the magic. Wow, when you have a heart of love, that is enough to do the magic. And you know, one of the things I also came across during the course of um, sometimes last week and really, you know, blew my mind and you started talking about excuses as the fact that when you, you know, let go of your excuses, then your results find its way into your life and yeah. basically that let me now you know put you more on the spotlight for the reason why i called you here this evening i want you to tell me a little bit about sexuality and disability what what, what do you think because i was thinking now in the course of the week i don't think persons with disability have any form of sexual or <laughs> anything like that let me tell you a story um when i was in secondary school there was this lady who was in a wheelchair and um, true life story okay. and she was in a wheelchair and she was pregnant nobody knew you know, um, one day she was just supposed to go and use the restroom and, you know, the baby started coming out, literally. This happened in my secondary school. You know, so, we were wondering, ah... Please, for just sake, was she a student or a teacher? She was a student. Oh, okay. In my secondary school. So the question now became... I mean, we didn't know that she was even having sex, let alone getting pregnant. So the question became, who could have slept with this girl in the state? So I, I, I've come to understand and in my work, because they bring people with disability here, you know, who are having sexuality issues. Every human being with blood in their vein has got a sexuality, mm. you know. So um, that's why you see mad women get pregnant. You know, the question is who impregnated them? You know, so every human being with blood in their vein has got a sexuality. But oftentimes, because we see people with disability, we just assume that disability is also a disability of sexuality. Mm. You no, know, disability simply means maybe a part of the body is not functioning, you know, and that is not a disability of emotions. So when you now become disabled in your emotion, then you have a bigger problem. But these people can respond to touch, they can respond to love, they can respond to anything. So I, do, I, I think it's a misconception, um, and I think it comes with lack of awareness in this part of the world where we just think that, hey, someone with disability, disability shouldn't get married, so we, we label people and all those kind of things. But, I mean, I've seen quite a number of them come here, and I've Please seen some of... that thought. You've, you've said so many things, and I'm <laughs> literally blown away because... I, I, I know I did not tell you I was going to be, you know, going delving yeah. into this kind of deep work on sexuality and disability. Mm. Tell me, what's your definition of sexuality? Because we might have viewers out there that do not even know what sexuality means. So, is sexuality just sex? No. Is, so, please tell us what sexuality, sexuality is. different from sex is. because sexuality is basically the overall... Um, the overall makeup of a human being right so it, it comes with um it covers identity it covers your emotion it covers negotiation it covers everything about you what makes you you is your sexuality so it's not just um someone penetrating someone no 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 the overall um per perception about yourself overall self-concept self-image about yourself is your sexuality now sex or sexual intercourse is another ball game entirely, you know, then the definition for that, of course, is left for you. There were different definitions, you know, for that, you know, but I can give you my own definition, which is totally different, but when we're talking about sexuality, it's about everything that, 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 that talks about you, everything. So tell me, um, in the little work that you've done on disability, because when you talked, you said they bring to you persons with disability, and yeah. one of the learnings that we've gotten today is that, um, Everyone that has blood flowing in them or blood flowing in yeah. their veins, the emotion is not disabled. The emotion is does not have any form of disability. Yeah. So if I have a form of disability, my emotions are intact and I can't still feel touch yeah. and feel like having sex. Yeah. And so it's possible for me to have sex, yeah. um, even though I have a disability. Yes. So 
um, you have defined for us that disability does not mean a disabled emotion or a disabled sexuality. Yeah. Okay, so tell me, um, but do you think somewhere, somehow, that persons with disabilities probably will function, you know, less when it comes to sex than, you know, <laughs> persons that do not have a form of disability. So, for instance, maybe if I don't have legs or I don't, I, am, I have uh, cerebral palsy or Down syndrome, maybe I won't be able to enjoy sex as much because maybe something is missing. I don't, I don't think so. I even think that a lot of people with disability have sex more from my experience because, I mean, from my field work because... Number one, um, now I will not talk about people who have cerebral palsy, you know, or Down syndrome, you know, but the other ones, so I don't have a. I remember a lady, um, again, in my school, there were a lot of bad people in my school, you know, <laughs> or you a a leg so. was amputated, but if you were looking for the number one person who had sex the most among the girls in my school, she was the one. Now, from my experience and from my work, what I realize is that because society stigmatizes mm. many of these people, they are looking for a sense of acceptance. So anything that makes them feel or So, I mean, it's cool to sleep with like 10 guys because I feel, oh, they are running after me. I'm a hot chick after all. Yeah. So anything that makes them feel that sense of completeness, you know, they fall for it. You know, but for people who have um, cerebral palsy, Down I mean, I've seen quite, I have a mentee who has cerebral palsy. I have, um, I've seen people with Down syndrome. They brought one the other day. The problem was that everywhere he goes, he tries to touch a lady, you know, and the guy, I was, I was, I had to literally be learning through him, you know, what goes on in his mind, you know, because the emotion goes awire. If you pick any human being, irrespective of their disability, you, uh, you give them pornography to solve, it's only a matter of time. They will also feel you know, what the number, well, the other people feel, and a, a disabled person can actually be addicted to sex. And I've seen quite a number of them who are actually uncontrollable, compulsive, sexual appetite for sexual activities, and I've seen lots of them like that. So, definitely, um, the disability does not affect the sexuality in any way at it, all. It, it I want you to hold that thought because I'm going to come back to you again, please. And I'm going to be checking with you what you think. So, in case you're just joining us, this is Hope Grill with Crystal. And what we basically do on Hope Grill is teach, is help infuse and help engage you to the point where your hope is aroused and you are able to move from one level uh, to another level. Basically, you eat hope, you grill hope, you watch hope, you touch hope, you experience hope, and you feel hope at the end of the show. And the person I have with me this evening is Praise for Owe. I call him, you know, the enigma praise <laughs> and you know praise is a family man and this evening we're talking sexuality and disability in case you have any questions that you want to ask it's okay for you to dm your questions to us or even drop your uh, questions in the comment box below because then we'll be able to answer those questions and we'll be able to reach back to you praise so um tell me as a nation are we doing so much in ensuring the persons with disability um, are cared for? I don't think so. Okay. I don't think so. It starts with parents. How many parents, you know, I, I, and it pains my heart that we, there's no awareness and um, I'm pained when I go for a sh comedy show and someone is running a comedy on, and is using and is mentioning imbeciles and is mentioning all kinds of people with disability. It, it pisses mm -hmm. me off when I go into a church and I hear someone raise a prayer point and I say, may you not be a father to a disabled. And I'm wondering, what are you talking about? What are you? you should educate people. A person is a human being, right? They did not pray for many, some of the things they go through, you know. But when you make all those kind of prayers, it shows me the kind of person you are. And this is a nation where we pray not to fail, yet we want to succeed. You know, so I'm not sure we have done enough because, I mean, see the way we construct our houses. We do, do not make provision for, um, what, what do you call it now? Uh, the, the, the ramps. The ramps where persons with disabilities can, can go through. See the way we... Uh, I, I'm well-traveled and... Every country I go to, their transportation system, there is allowance for people with disability. Every of their malls, there's a car park designated for people with disability. You know, but this is a nation where uh, we don't not care about the vulnerable at all. You know, we would just, we would rather trample them, you know, we would rather abuse them, we would rather look at them and they are, feel sorry for them, mm. uh, you know. And that, that's a problem for me. I can't deal with that. So, uh, for you, if you want to 
how do we do you think we can educate persons with disability on their sexuality and ensure that you know they they, they don't get abused because um, I've also heard case in point I mean I was uh, chatting with someone with disability during the course of the week and uh, she was telling me how you know like you just rightly said people think because of her disability she doesn't feel any form of emotions at all so um, you know men shouldn't I mean the, that's a man actually told her um, with your disability, can you have sex? Mm. And for her, she told the person, I mean, something is wrong with my legs, yes, but there's nothing wrong with my mm. my mind and, you know, my sexual organs. I definitely do feel. Mm. And, of course, I think, in, in my mind, maybe the guy was trying to take advantage of her oh, yeah. and trying to see that, okay, because she has a disability, I can just go ahead and maybe sleep with her and, you know, and, move on and with her life. Away, yeah. But, of course, she was able to cut him off and, you know, move on with her life. How do we get to educate persons with disability about their sexuality. I think it's the basic, it's the basic same way you educate the other people. You know, I don't like to even categorize people as disabled and um, this, I, I don't, for me, it doesn't even sound right with me. Mm -hmm. I want to see every human being as a human being. I want to see every human, because there are people who are mentally disabled, right? That the people who have maybe leg disability, are more intelligent then. And we've seen them. We've seen Sean Stevenson. We've seen what he's done with his life. We've seen the, the number one mind on the planet right now is Stephen Hawkins. Stephen Hawkins is totally disabled. But that's the guy who is telling us what is going to happen in the future. Yeah. You know, so what are we talking about? So I, I do not think um, there's any difference except for people that you might use sign language for. Um, I've seen a few organizations approach me to say, Praise, can you teach us this thing so that we can teach? So yeah. what I do, I, I mean, I, in fact, those ones, I don't even charge them. I teach them what we're going to teach these people is the same way it's the same sexuality education that you give a child um it's the same age you start with 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 the whether disabled or not disabled the same age the same process um, my problem is a lot of um, people with disability get um, sexually molested mm. much more so you see a lady with down syndrome you know she just keeps getting pregnant you can't even trace because she can't even say who slept with her but you I mean she so a lot of people take advantage of them and that's why i think we even need to pay more attention to them and begin to teach them how to spot the predator how to report the predator you know and how to do many of so you 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 started talking about there's a certain age when you need to start teaching a child about disability what what i mean i'm about, curious yeah. about uh, or about their sexuality yeah. what, what it's age, age, it's age two actually age two. yeah the moment your child starts talking you need to teach sexuality so you mean at the age of two i need to start telling my child yeah there's age, there's age appropriate sexuality education okay. there's what to teach from two to three three to five five to eight eight to twelve and twelve to eighteen different levels of teaching and different things that you done there are materials you can get out there in case you're yeah. just uh, joining us this is praise for where and we are basically talking sexuality and disability and one of the things that he's telling us is you know you need to start teaching a child about sexuality from when they are age two and um, it doesn't matter whether the child has a disability or not you need to start teaching every child about sexuality from the age of two and trust me you can get loads and loads and loads of materials from the sex center which is um, one of praises um, organizations and literally materials that will help you to teach the child on you know how to spot the predator yeah who is a predator a predator has been defined as someone who takes advantage of a child's vulnerability but that definition has changed over time a predator the way i define it it's anyone who gives your child anything and tells your child not to tell you because the first thing the predator does is to teach a child secrecy before they make um, the demand on their sexuality. So why would you give my child something and tell him not to tell his parents? Exactly. You're already teaching my child something because you want something else. So when you give the right definition that way, 